with Jesus all the time. Come and die, Master calleth, come and die. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and
try to get it to work on here. This is a good old song. I remember singing this when I was first saved. It's, it's, a, it's a good song up here on the screen. For a long time I traveled down the lonely road. My heart was so heavy in sin I sank low. Then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour. I'm just glad that I found out He would bring me out through His saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison has taken his flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched beggar that found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by this wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. You know that word hallelujah i was listening to jimmy swagger the other day and he was preaching in a stadium and it must have had two hundred thousand people in it it was just around it was in 1988 and he was in uh honduras and uh he was preaching the gospel and bless the lord uh he would say something and then a man would repeat it in spanish and then he'd say something and then the man would repeat it in spanish and he just kept on and kept on back and forth he'd say it in english and the man would say it in spanish and, Back and forth, back and forth. And all of a sudden, Jimmy Swagger got excited. And he said, Hallelujah! And that man said, Hallelujah! And he said, Hallelujah! And that man said, Hallelujah! And I tell you, there's one word that's the same in every language, and it's that word right there. It's Hallelujah. The glory be to God that the Bible says, Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah. That's a contraction of Yahweh and Jehovah. And glory be to God, when you say hallelujah, you're saying praise the Lord. That's what you're saying. You're saying praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah.
I can feel His Holy Spirit unwelling deep within. Well, sometimes it feels so gentle, and sometimes like a mighty rushing wind. But that same Spirit that brings Jesus up from death and the grave, it shall raise this whole oh, body up and take me on Sunday. Oh, they laid him in an empty tomb and they rolled the old stone at the door. They put soldiers there to guard it. You know they thought they'd done away with the Lord. But on the third day, the stone was rolled away. He came forth from the grave. And some spirit that brings Jesus up will take me home someday. I can feel His Holy Spirit But that same spirit that raised Jesus up from death and the grave, it shall raise this whole body up and take me home someday. It shall raise this whole body up and take me home someday.
salt represents prayers. The egg represents you, and the salt represents prayers of other people. Your friends, people you love. <clears throat> Let's see what those prayers do.
pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. They've been away for like three years.
righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, and the love wherewith, wherewith thou hast loved me, be my may, may love me. Manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy words. He's talking about his disciples. God gave him those disciples, his twelve disciples. Um, what did he pray for them? What did he pray for regarding his disciples? Um,
recite disciples in that verse. That they might have my joy. That they might have joy. Um, let's see. Go to um, verse 15. Auto. Whenever you want to go, you might get hit. 
but you have to go when you have to you have to go with them. Um, our memory verse tells us that we should yield to God when we pray. When we ask for God's will to be done, we're yielding to God, which means that we're trusting God to do what's best, even though it may not be what we want at the time. Can you think of the time when Jesus yielded to God's will? And turn in your Bibles to chap to Matthew chapter 26.
Jesus yielded to God, didn't he? He prayed for um, he, did, he prayed for the cup to pass from him, but he prayed he wanted God's will to be done. Um, and he said that three different times he said it. Um, but in the end, you know, God's will was done, wasn't it? Was God's will done? Okay, so this is how we should pray also. We're not always going to get, things aren't always going to turn out the way we want them to, but as long as God's will is done, that's what we should, that's what we should desire, is for God's will to be done. Yeah. 
every day of our life. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. You know, the Lord asks a question today in this scripture in Isaiah 53 that's the, it hasn't changed. It's still the same today as it was 700 B.C. when this was written. Who has believed our report? You know, it's, it's enough today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It hasn't changed. It's still the same. God asked this question. He says, Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It tells us a little bit about Jesus. About the, how he it shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. It tells us that Jesus was an ordinary man. That he had no form nor comeliness. These pictures I think that we've seen of Christ are not accurate. I believe that Jesus was a was a ordinary, plain looking fellow. It says that he had no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. You know, Jesus in his day was not well received. There's many today who despise and reject him still even today. He is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus didn't come to this world to be served, but to serve. Right. and to give his life a ransom for many. You know, it's interesting how that many want to enjoy the blessings of Christ, but they forget about being partaker of his sufferings. That is what Paul said. Paul said that I want to be partaker of his sufferings. Why? Why? Did Paul say that? He said that I may know Him Amen. and the power of His resurrection. You see, you can't have God's power without being partaker of God's sufferings. It goes the same way, hand in hand. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from Him. He was despised and we esteem him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. They believed Christ to be accursed of God, that God had rejected him when he was crucified. They said, well, if he's the Son of God, let him come down from the cross. And then we'll believe. Well, he believed in God. Let God deliver him. That's what this prophecy is of. This prophecy is it is of those who who uh, believed that he was stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded. Why? Not for his own sin. Not for his own blasphemy or disobedience. He was wounded for our transgressions, yours and mine. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. And the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. Amen. Jesus was chastised for you and I that we could have peace with God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to have peace with God? Thank you. you know, if, if, brother, if, you, uh, if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. And He knows all things. Brother, how important it is this morning for you to be at peace with God. For you to know that your heart is right with God. Jesus is coming back. And He's not going to be hanging on a cross. And He'll not be a baby in a manger. This is the day of salvation but the day of the Lord is at hand. It's coming. Amen. But now is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the time of mercy. Now is the time of grace and unmerited favor. 
But whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. This is the time to be saved. Glory be to God. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Yes. Now this was a prophecy of what was to come. <laughs> Glory be to God. This is a prophecy of, of the coming Messiah, of the coming Deliverer, of the coming Savior. This was a prophecy that had not yet been fulfilled when it was written. It had not yet been fulfilled when Christ walked this earth. It was fulfilled the day that Jesus was crucified on Calvary 2,000 years ago. It was fulfilled. It, the prophecy came to pass. Don't you love to read in the Bible when God would say, and it came to pass. Because God would give the word and then it would happen and God would say it came to pass that God fulfilled His promise. Just as He gave this promise here, God fulfilled His promise. So today we look at this and we can look not only at the prophecy that was foretelling that Christ was going to come, that the chastisement of our peace was going to be upon Him, that He was going to be bruised for our iniquity, but that it has already taken place. That it has already been fulfilled. The Bible, Peter, looking back to when Jesus died on the cross, Peter looking back and knowing that the Scripture had already been fulfilled, says that he who his own self bare our sins in his own body, God made him to be sin for us, Amen. who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us. And so he says that he who, who his own sin self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That ye were as sheep gone astray. Yes. But now... Ye have returned unto the bishop of your souls, is the rest of that scripture. Ye were healed. Peter's saying that this is past tense. So Isaiah wrote it in foretelling to come. Christ came and fulfilled it. And then Peter says, Ye were healed. You were as sheep gone astray. But now you have returned to the bishop of your souls. Listen, God, brother, we often forget God has conquered evil. Amen. God has defeated Satan. Amen. He is a defeated enemy. Brother, I've heard people even in the church say, oh, the devil has power. He only has the power that God allows him Amen. to have. Christ Amen. said, all power Amen. is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. If Satan has power, you, it's your fault. Right. Don't you blame God. If Satan has power over you, it's your fault. <laughs> because God has defeated him. Amen. God has conquered him. He causes us always to triumph in Christ Jesus. This battle has already been won. It has already been conquered. Glory be to God. All we need to do is believe. Who Amen. hath believed our report? The, the human mind does not want to believe simple things. The human mind wants to make it complicated. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtly so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's so simple a child can understand. You know what, as a matter of fact, Brother Jim, He ordained strength in children. Have, have, have you never read that in the mouth of babes thou hast perfected praise Amen. and ordained strength yeah. that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger? God's looking for children who will simply believe. Yes, Lord. Simply believe. They, 
He didn't call them the men and women of Israel. He called them the children of Israel. Yeah. That's what we are. God is, is wants to use children to accomplish mighty and great things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, could you imagine uh, going, uh, getting uh, all your wherewithal together and your, your, your hunting rifle and saying, oh, uh, I'm going to go to war. I'm going to go storm the beaches of Normandy again. Well, that's crazy. World War II is already over. It's been over for decades. Well, wouldn't it be crazy to go and to say, well, I'm going into battle to go and fight this battle? Brother, it's the same way with God's battle. It's already been finished. Amen. It's already been conquered. God has already defeated the enemy yes. with His stripes. You were healed. Amen. If you have trusted God, and if you believe God today, I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about 10 years ago. I'm not talking about 50. I'm talking about now. Amen. Now. Now ye have returned unto the bishop of your soul. And I'm talking about today. If you believe God today and you are in God today, hallelujah. I tell you, I was reading there in John 17 and it was a blessing. He says that He makes you perfect. Perfect. He makes you perfect. You know what the psalmist said? Thou wilt perfect that which concerneth me. It said there in John 17 as we were reading the Lord's Prayer. Did anybody else pick up on that? He says that He makes us, that, that He said, I in them and Thou, Father, in me, that they may be made perfect yes. in one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He makes us perfect in Him, Amen. in God. He makes us whole. I was a sinner, but I'm no longer a sinner. I was uh, on my way to hell, but now I'm a citizen of heaven. My citizenship uh, is written above. Uh, brother, it might be down here in the courthouse uh, in, in Canal County that I'm a citizen of Canal County, but I tell you, that's going to perish. That's going to uh, uh, melt with fervent heat, but there's a Lamb's Book of Life that's written in heaven uh, who the man with the acorn wrote down, uh, and he said, Glory be to God, he's mine. He's a citizen of my kingdom, amen. Glory be to God, I was that, but now, now, we are children of God, children of the living King. I was healed by Jesus' stripes. Jesus went about doing good. How, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. He said healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Amen. He healed all. I tell you this morning that you have if you are in Jesus Christ, you have been made perfect in God's eyes. Brother, you have power over anything that can come against you. Amen. You have power over any amount of temptation. You have power over any amount of sin. You have power over any amount of, of, of demonic force that can come against you. God has given you power over it. Yes, Lord. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Glory be to God. Does that mean that nothing bad is going to come against you? Absolutely not. It happened to Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus conquered it. Amen. You see, it wouldn't have been just enough for Jesus. It, it, could, he would have been, it would have been like any other religion if Jesus would have just went and died on the cross. Right. And oh man, he died. He martyred. A, look, there's people that go in the, in the crowds and set off bombs with themselves every day and do these things. But brother, Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. He said, I am he that was dead and am alive forevermore and I have the keys of, of hell and of death. Jesus conquered that. There's none other that's done that. You know what? If Jesus had just went to the cross and died on the cross... Brother, I don't believe that we would be worshiping the way that we worship today. But there was something different that these men experienced 
that he, brother, that glory be to God, they were uh, uh, downtrodden. They had forgotten that he had told them that he was going uh, to destroy the temple and he'll build it again in three days. They had forgotten those things. Uh, brother, they were discouraged. Uh, and hallelujah, he appeared to them. Uh, the glory be to God. When he ascended into heaven, there was 500 Amen. brethren at once that saw him. Uh, and there was two angels that stood by and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye again? Amazing. This same Jesus, he'll come back in like manner. Glory be to yes. God. Hallelujah. Yes. It's coming back. Right. Brother, if it hadn't been for that, if it hadn't been that these men saw something worth believing in, it'd be like every other religion. But glory be to God. The foundations of these truths are the gospel, the good news from God, amen, that death has been conquered and that Christ conquered evil and that through Christ, hallelujah, we will live. He says, because I live, ye will live also. Amen. It's Him, hallelujah, that causes us to live. It's Him that causes us to conquer sin. Yes. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. Whoever, whosoever, it's the same today. Listen, my God never changes. Yes, amen. He is the same today. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's the same Jesus. And I tell you that those same words that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 18 where He said, And where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst. I tell you that, brother, you can gather in a yard somewhere. You can gather in a bedroom. You can gather in a church house. And Jesus said, I will be there in the midst of you. He's the same Jesus as He was that day. Amen. He's the same Jesus. Brother, He doesn't change. And I'm so glad. All of the miracles and the healings that Christ did, all of the healings that came through His sacrifice, brother, uh, He healed uh, all that were oppressed. And uh, all of these things, the Bible told us that these things Jesus did so that you would believe that He is the Son of God and that believing that you might have eternal life. The reason why Christ did heal people was so that they would believe He was the Son of God. And did you know that you, in you and I, in you and I, God is glorified and sinners will believe. Sinners will believe. They see how you used to be. And but now they see how you are now. If brother, if if, if folks uh, desire and they have a burden for sinners to be saved, the only Bible and the only truth that they will hear or that they will uh, accept is the truth that comes through you and your life. I can remember just as plain as day being a lost man and seeing how they they advertised on TV. It was about like this one here. And I was a lost man and I saw it came up on TV and it says, order a King James Bible for free. I'm free? Well, I can't hardly go wrong for free. So I ordered it, ordered it for free. 1-800 number, ordered it for free. And it came and I read the book of Genesis. And brother, it did not make a bit of sense to me. It was the most boring thing I had read. I'll be honest with you. I was bored. And then I said, well, I'll just skip to the end of the book and I'll read the book of Revelation. And brother, I was so confused, I didn't know what in the world was. I knew something bad was going to happen, but I had no clue about it. My, brother, my, my mind was blinded. I knew who Jesus was. The devils also believe and tremble. Amen. But I knew, I knew something was missing. But glory be to God, it takes you. It takes Christians do you remember the eunuch? Do you remember the man, the, the, the Ethiopian, who was reading? And he was reading. And what was he reading, Brother Jim? Oh, glory. He was reading Isaiah 53. And Philip, the Lord took Philip and he called him away to this place where he had to go out in the middle of the desert. And here was this Ethiopian who was riding through and he was reading. Philip heard him reading Isaiah 53. And he went up to him and he said, Do you understand what you read? Do you know what you're reading? And you know what he said? You know what he replied? How can I? Except a man show me. 
How can I? He admitted that he needed help. And you know what Philip began to do? He began to preach to him Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He began to preach to him Jesus Christ and tell him uh, who Jesus was. And that the, the, the prophet wasn't speaking of himself, but he was speaking of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Master, uh, the Savior, uh, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. It was him who he was reading of. And man said, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Here's water. <laughs> Amen. That man was saved. And he was <laughs> baptized. And right there, his eyes were opened. You see, Jesus makes the difference. Amen. Jesus makes the difference. We were. We were as lost sheep. But now, we have returned unto the bishop of our souls. The Lord did many miracles Many people were healed so that the Lord would be glorified and that people would believe He was the Son of God. Matthew chapter 8, after the Sermon on the Mount, the Bible said that there came a man, a leper. And that leper, he, he knew who Jesus was. And he said, Lord, if Thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said, I will. He said, be Thou clean. And you know what? Immediately, His leprosy was cleansed. You know what leprosy is representative of in the Bible? It's representative of sin. It's representative of sin. If you study what leprosy is, leprosy begins with a bacteria. It's a bacteria. I don't know about you, but I can't see bacteria. You get maybe under a microscope, you might be able to get to see it. But brother, with the human carnal eye, you cannot see bacteria. But I tell you what you can see. You can see the effects of that bacteria. Right. Brother, when it gets into a person and it gets inside of them, and then you know what it begins to do? It begins to show on their face. It begins to show on their body. Into that bacteria, that little tiny bug is what it is. It's a little tiny pestilence. This earth was cursed because of man's sin. And God said that there would be pestilence and thorns and thistles that would infest the earth. That little bacteria... It'll take hold inside of a man or inside of a woman and it manifests itself and it causes leprosy and it brings their immune system down and their immune system is unable to fight things off. And then from that there's other effects to where their skin and all kinds of other things because of infections that they cannot fight off. This, this, this leprosy, this tiny bacteria, I tell you that sin is the same way then brother, it doesn't take some big, huge, monstrous sin to cause you to fall. Brother, a little leaven, the Bible says here, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little, it, it, it just takes a little bit. Now, you ladies know about bacon and stuff, which I know absolutely nothing about, and you know that you take just a little bit of leaven is it true to put in something to make the bread rise? It makes the whole thing rise, doesn't it? It makes it take, it, it takes some little tiny thing to make the whole thing to balloon up. See the same thing all through the Bible. Horrible things began with just little things. Amen. You see, it was David that stayed home instead of being out with his brothers fighting in the war. And then he went out on his balcony and he saw the woman bathing. And that's how it began. Yeah. But it all went all the way to where David lost his firstborn child. Yeah. Brother, it was just a little bit. It was just a little bit of sin. Listen, brother, sin is not something to be toyed with. It is, a, it is a serious thing. It is so serious that God gave the very best He could to take it away. See, Jesus taught here in Matthew, Mark chapter, chapter 9. He says, if your hand offends you, cut it off. It is better 
for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. So is Jesus saying, well, uh, 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 if, if I can't stop sinning, I need to cut my hand off? Jesus is trying to get us to realize, He is trying to get us to realize how dangerous the effects of sin are and what the price is of sin is the price of sin is outrageous it is outrageous brother it is it is unreasonable that's what Jesus is teaching here he is saying that it is unreasonable the amount of sin the amount that you have to pay for sin is outrageous you can never attain it Jesus isn't saying, well, if, 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 if you're a thief and you keep stealing with your hand and you, and you keep doing these things, if you cut your hand off, well, then you're going to go to heaven. That's not what He's teaching. Jesus is teaching us that the wages of sin is death. It is, brother, far beyond anything that you can pay. He said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. It's better for you to have one eye than to, enter in, than to have two and to enter into hell. Jesus, brother, it's, it's the same as the parable that He taught about the man who uh, uh, when, when he owed a great debt and the tax collector came. Imagine the tax collector to come and knock on your door tomorrow and say, you, are, you owe back taxes uh, for something that you did ten years ago. And I'm going to take everything you've got. I'm going to take your house. I'm going to take your family. I'm going, to, I'm going to sue your children. I'm going to sue your grandchildren. I'm going to take everything you've got and I'm going to lock you in jail. That's unreasonable, brother. Yeah. But that's what Jesus taught on. He taught on it in Matthew chapter 18. The man who wouldn't forgive his brother. But he went out and he took him and he took him by the throat and he said, pay me that thou owest. Well, you know what? It came up to be reckoned that he had to pay it all. And he said that everything was to be sold. His house, his children, his family, everything. All he had to do was say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus is teaching us here. The price of sin is unreasonable. But this leper, this leper was healed by Jesus. How was He healed, my brother? How was He healed? He asked. He said, Lord, if You will, You can make me clean. Amen. You know what Jesus said? I will. I will. What you need to do is ask. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Do you know what the arm represents? It represents the power of God. Amen. Amen. That's the power of my God. He can heal you of sin. Brother, don't you be deceived that little sins don't matter. Don't you be deceived. Don't let the devil deceive you like that. Brother, we need to confess our sin. Amen. We need to confess our faults. And we need to say, Lord God, heal me. And you know what? He'll, do, he'll heal you. That's my Savior, amen? I'm declaring the Gospel this morning. Amen? I'm talking about good news. I'm talking about, brother, that if you got sin in your life, you need to say, Jesus, if you will, you can make me clean. Yes. You know what Jesus will do? He'll make you over and over again. Amen. Bless the Lord. There was another man. Here's another man who had dropsy. You know what dropsy is? It's congestive heart failure. That's what it is. That's what we call it today, congestive heart failure. This man had dropsy. There was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus was in the synagogue and it was on the Sabbath day. And he looked around to him and he says, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? You know what? The Sabbath was not, man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. Amen. Amen? That's, that's what Jesus said. They were so caught up in religion, Jesus went. He wanted to see what they'd say. He said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And every man held their peace. But Jesus healed him. Amen. You know what Jesus did? Jesus healed his heart. Amen. He healed his heart. <laughs> Jesus can heal your heart. 
Do you know what your heart is? When we read in the Bible about the heart, well, we know that the heart pumps blood and we know it's a physical. Brother, there's nothing physical about the heart that God's interested in. God's interested in the innermost workings of your mind. The innermost workings and the innermost thoughts. The innermost things that you ponder upon and the things that, that, that trouble you and the things that delight you. God is interested in those things. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12 that for the Word of God is a quick, it's alive, and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and tense. God is interested in the thoughts that go on inside of your mind. When you read the word heart and Bible, you can say, my mind. The mind that I think with. Not your brain, but your mind. What you, the, thing, the thing that control, the control of knowledge, your conscience. God is interested in that. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever your mind is dwelling on, that's what you're going to talk about. Amen. And God, God, Jesus, with His stripes, ye were healed. Christ paid the price. Amen. He was beaten with that cat of nine tails to heal you. Amen. To heal your heart as He healed this man's heart. Yes. With the dropsy that day on the Sabbath in the synagogue. Yes. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your mind. God knows that the enemy's battleground where He wants to take control of you is in the mind. He wants to. If he knows that if he can get through to your mind, that he can try to bring you down. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I can't see the devil. You can't see the devil. I can't fight the devil. You give me any kind of gun or knife or sword or whatever, I can't fight him with that. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but I tell you that they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and it brings every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Yes. Brother, God will heal your mind. Amen. He's already did it. He's already done it. This example here was just to show His power. That what He can, what he can do in the spiritual, He's not limited by just the, the, the physical. He's, glory be to God, the Bible said, and they, came, they drew nigh to Him to hear the Word when He was preaching. He entered into Capernaum, uh, and there was brought to Him a man that was lame. Uh, and hallelujah, when they could not draw an eye to Him before the press, they uncovered the roof where He was. Uh, and they let down the bed wherein the, the sick of the palsy lay. Uh, and when Jesus saw their faith, He said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. And they said, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Only God can forgive sins. He said, So that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I send thee arise. And hallelujah, take thy bed and walk. And you know what? That man walked. Hallelujah. God did, does, did the physical healing because of the people who were blind the people who could not understand the truth of spiritual things, God did the physical healing so that they could believe who He was. So this example of the man with the drops, it's not just a story. It's a scriptural account of the power of God to heal our hearts. To give us a new heart. God says, I'll put a new heart within you. Not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. And a new spirit I put it within you. Amen. He says, draw nigh unto God. And God will draw nigh 
unto you. Purify your hearts. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. In another scripture in James chapter 1, it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. God doesn't want you to be double-minded. God don't want you to have one foot in hell and one foot on the earth. God doesn't want that. God wants you, hallelujah, to be walking that path, hallelujah, that you know you're anchored in Jesus. I know He's my Savior. I know I'm going to heaven. I know I've been forgiven. I know I'm redeemed. The Bible says, let the redeemed say so. My sins have been forgiven. They're washed in the blood. And glory be to God, He changed my heart and gave me a new heart. You see, the Bible says, who had in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, who hath known the mind of the Lord that He may instruct him? But we, that's we, that's us, that's you and me, we have the mind of Christ. Bless you, Brother Jim. Bless you, Brother. We have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Bless the Lord. Amen. My brother, when that old mind Starts trying to make me think on things that I don't want to think about. I say, devil, glory be to God. I'm a partaker of the divine nature of God. And amen, I've got the mind of Jesus. And I'm not going to dwell on those things. I'm not going to give them power. Amen. Jesus is my power. Amen. Jesus is my Savior. He healed my heart and my mind and my soul. I was a sinner devil, but I'm not anymore. Amen. I'm not anymore. Praise. Hallelujah. Here in Mark 7, we see a man that was deaf, and he couldn't even talk. He couldn't, he couldn't talk. The Bible says they bring him one of him that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand on him. Now Jesus, again, did a physical healing. The Bible says that he spat and he touched his tongue and then he put his fingers in his ears and he said, Ephatha, which means be open. And Jesus said these things and all of a sudden the man could hear. All of a sudden the man could talk. Yeah. Glory be to God. And he praised God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, brother, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who was deaf be able to hear for the first time. I saw it just a little while here back. Oh, I was blessed to see it. And it made me think of Jesus. A little boy, younger than Ray Ray, just a little boy, maybe three years old. They did a surgery on him. And they made him to where he could hear. And one of the first things that he ever heard was his mommy's voice. He heard his mommy's voice. That little boy. <laughs> he was so excited. That's exactly what he He held his hands up like <laughs> He could hear his mommy talking. He was so excited to hear his mommy's voice. And this man here, he was deaf. And he could hear now. Glory be to God, I'm so glad that one day Jesus opened my ears. Listen, I tried to read the book. It didn't make no sense. I needed to hear it. Amen. I needed to hear it under the anointing. I needed to hear it, amen, from the uh, fellowship and the presence of our God Almighty. I'm not talking about a bunch of religious rules. I'm talking about God's set free spirit, amen. That's what I needed to hear. Brother, Jesus opens our ears. Faith cometh by hearing, Romans chapter 9. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, how wonderful it is to hear the Word of God. Oh, I'm not talking about just hearing Scripture. I'm talking about hearing God. The Bible says we are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Isn't it wonderful to hear of God? Brother, you can't have faith any other way. The only way you can have faith is by what God said. You know, I can tell you something. And you can say, well, i got faith in what Brother Troy told me. But Brother, that faith is only as strong as the one who promised it. 
But brother, you have faith in what God said. Amen. And you can stand on those promises. Amen. God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that He should repent. Hath He said and shall He not do it? Or hath He spoken and shall He not make it good? Listen. He will perform His oath. Amen. He will perform His Word. Faith comes by hearing. You must hear from God. Either you hear from God through the Scriptures or you hear from God as He speaks to your heart. You have faith in that. And I guarantee you, He won't speak to your heart anything that's out of disaccord with the Word. Amen. It will line up directly with it. You say, Brother Troy, I, I can't hear God. You need to get in His Word. Brother Troy, I, I can't hear Him speak to me. You need to get in His Word. You say, Brother Troy, I'm blind and I can't read. Brother, you need to get with someone that loves the Lord and will read the Word of God to you. Amen. And you can hear that Word. I tell you, Jesus opened this man, man's eyes and He opened this man's mouth. Glory be to God. You say, Brother Troy, uh, how does He heal our mouth? The Bible says in Psalms 81, I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open wide thy mouth. And I will fill it. <laughs> I'm glad to have a big mouth for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad to have a big mouth for Jesus. I'm, bro, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. It's good to talk about Jesus. Right. It's good to talk about good things. Amen. The Bible says there in Psalms 103, Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Brother, if all the things you can talk about is bad things, if everything that comes in your mind and then you end up talking about those bad things, you need a heart transplant. You need God to heal your heart. And I tell you, if He heals your heart, He'll heal your mouth. Amen. And amen, you'll want to talk about good things. What's it say? He's satisfied. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not starving hungry for the things of Jesus. He satisfies. Amen. He's the bread of life. Amen. He that believeth on Him shall never hunger. He that trusts in Him shall never Amen. thirst. He will satisfy you. He will quench that thirst. He will quench that hunger with His bread of life. Amen. You get in the Word, brother, and the Word will heal you. It will sanctify you. Amen, as we learned in Sunday school. The Bible told us that John... Dad, Zechariah, he wouldn't believe what the angel said. The angel said, you're going to have a baby. And he says, and when you, when you have that baby, I want you to call his name John. And you know what? He wouldn't believe. And you know what happened? His tongue was bound. Amen. His tongue, listen, if you, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? If you can't, if you don't believe, your, your tongue will be tied. You can't talk of these good things that we're speaking of. These good things that God satisfies you. It doesn't make sense. And it doesn't have, that brother, it's, it's like the trying to speak a foreign language. But he that believeth on God heareth us. And he speaks of those things. Zachariah's brother, he wouldn't believe, so his tongue was tied. But as soon as he confessed it and he wrote it on a tablet, his tongue was loosed. He wrote down and he said his name is John and his tongue was loose and he praised God. Hallelujah, brother. We're talking this morning uh, about God giving you a new mind, a new heart, uh, about taking away your sin. Now, hallelujah, giving you ears to hear and a mouth to confess, things to sing of. Hallelujah. And God has made us to sit in heavenly places, to sing heavenly songs, uh, to say heavenly prayers, to preach heavenly word and to testify of heavenly things. Woo, hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior Amen. we have. Glory to God. We've been healed. We've been healed. I, I remember. I mean, I, it, it's hard for me to think back, and I thank God that He that, that He 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 doesn't let me forget on what manner of man that I was. I don't dwell on it, and the only reason I talk about it is to testify. But I like to look. I think that I think to think back to where, brother, that a lot of the times the only things I could speak of were things that were bad. Jesus gave me a new mouth. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know why we sing that song? I love to hear Sister, Sister Gail sing it. It is no secret 
what God can do. What He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll welcome you with it is no secret what God can do. There's many other things that Jesus did. Hallelujah. Healings that He did. Brother, these aren't just stories. They're examples to us of God's power. The man with the withered hand, whose hand was withered. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 28, Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with what? His hands. <laughs> I tell you that God will give you a new set of hands. He'll give you a new set of hands and that the things that you work on, God will prosper those things. Whatsoever He doeth will prosper and His leaf also shall not wither. Glory be to God. He shall be planted by the tree of rivers of waters. And brother, uh, and He shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of waters whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever He doeth shall prosper. You know the devil had to confess about Job. He said, You have blessed the work of His hands. I tell you, God will bless the work of your hands. He'll give you a new hand. Because He did this man with the withered hand. He says that you should work with your hands the thing which is good that He might have to give to Him that needeth. Why does God bless the work of your hands? God blesses the work of your hands so you can be a blessing. Amen. It's not, it's not just for you. God blesses the work of your hands so you can be a blessing to someone else. Amen that someone else might be partaker of the divine nature of God. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Raising the dead. Jesus raised the dead. I was dead. I was like Lazarus, brother, and I was dead in trespass. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. By his stripes were healed. Where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I was dead. I was lost. But now I'm found. Amen. I was blind. But now I can see. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says that the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. There was a man who was blind from his birth. And they said to the Lord, they said, Lord, who sinned? This man or his parents? And if you notice, if you read there in John chapter 9, the Bible doesn't say that the man cried to Jesus and said, Jesus, heal me. He never did that in John chapter 9. He never asked. Jesus said, this man is blind that the works of God might be manifest in him. That God would be glorified. Amen. Brother, God wants us to be able to see, except you be born again, and except you be born of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see it. You're blind from those things. Just as I was when I would try to read the Bible. And it wouldn't make a bit of sense. One day, Jesus opened my eyes. Hallelujah. It opened your eyes, brother. How about lame men? All these men that were lame that Jesus made them to walk. Jeremiah 6 and 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see. Ask for the old paths. Where's the good way? And walk therein. Brother, I'm so glad that it hasn't changed. The way has not changed. The path has not changed. Amen. It's still the same today. He will calls you to walk. Just as he did that lame man that day. They lowered him down through the roof. They uncovered the roof. And Jesus saw him. There were so many people in there that they couldn't, they couldn't get to Jesus. So they lowered him down. That man took up his bed and walked. Hallelujah. And I tell you that Jesus will cause your feet no longer to walk places that you shouldn't be walking. But he'll cause you to walk on the path, the highway of holiness. Amen. That the unclean cannot pass over. Hallelujah. He'll have you to walk on that pathway. Amen. That pathway that leads to glory. Thus said, Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. Pass for the old paths. Amen. And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. See, there's a condition to all these things. 
who hath believed our report? There's a condition. The Bible says here, but they said, we will not walk very Jeremiah 6 and 16. Well, I love this scripture, but it's often cut off right here before the very last one, the very last sentence. They said, we will not walk very You have to choose to allow God to heal you. Just as you chose salvation, any man in his right mind would choose heaven over hell. Any man, any man would choose heaven over hell. Amen? Just as you chose the salvation of Jesus Christ over perishing in a lake of fire for eternity, you must choose to allow God to heal you of all these things that we talked about. If any one of these things, and I guarantee you that, that, that one of these things applies to every one of us. That there's one thing that applies to one of us in some area or another that God is working on. Because we're a work in progress. Philippians 1 and 6 says for us to be confident of this very thing. That he that hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it. You say, Brother Troy, I, I don't need no more work. Brother, I, I believe you're deceived. Because even the Apostle Paul himself says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I put those things that are behind, and I reach to those things Amen. that are before. Brother, I'm looking forward to the day when I'm going to be changed. I'm going to have a glorified body, fashioned like unto Jesus. But until that day comes, I need help. We as God's people need help. If anybody in here not need help? Raise your hand. Anybody here today? Anyone need help? God will help you. God will heal you. The Bible says here in Hebrews 12, Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight the paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Let it be healed. You need to let God heal you this morning. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, let God heal you. You see, He took those stripes for you and I that we could be healed of these infirmities. It's already been done. It's already been paid for. You just have to accept it. If we could get a song of invitation and uh yes, absolutely amen.
power from on high upon you, Lord, you told us that we would lose faith on earth, that you would loosen in heaven, that you would send the answer, that you would send the healing, that your mighty hand, Father, would accomplish the work.
That's me. Dad, would you lead us in praising the Lord? Yes. Our most kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Give me the relief that 